Hi, so I've got the, um, the thumbs up that I'm live. Can you all hear me? That's good. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Now you're you're protected. You have headphones. You can't hear them next door. <laughs> I can. If I get bored with my presentation, I'll just listen to them. Um, right. Thank you so much for coming. I have just realised a huge mistake I made on my presentation um, because hopefully you came in this to find out what your CDO needs to know about data governance. And the reason I made a mistake is I prepared this for this session and then last week I was asked to present to the International Association of CDOs, which I didn't even know existed, and so I changed the title slide and I forgot to change it back, so I do apologise. Um, so just a quick show of hands, who here is a CDO or equivalent if your job title is similar? Okay, so actually, I knew this slide is for you. <laughs> this is what you need to know about data governance. And all the rest of you, I'm going to tell you what you need to tell your CDOs when you get back to work tomorrow. <clears throat> so before we start, uh, my name is Nicola Rass. I'm known as the data governance coach. I've been doing data governance for nearly 19 years now, which is somewhat scary when I say it out loud. Um, I got into data governance entirely by accident. I think it's fair to tell you that along the way, I've made every mistake you can possibly make. And I've got all the scars. And then the good thing is now that I'm able to tell people, don't do it like this. And I'm not telling you because I read it in a textbook. I'm telling you because I did it that way. And it really was too painful and it wasn't successful. So, you know, I, I have a, a wonderful job now. I spend all my time training people, coaching, and just helping my clients be successful at data governance. And over the last few years, we've had, you know, this emergence of the CDO role. And I'll be honest, if you don't have a CDO in your company, don't panic. It doesn't mean you can't be successful at data governance. I was helping my clients do that for many years, long before the CDO role existed. But what we need to do is um, use their position to help us. And if you haven't got one, you need another executive sponsor. So choose somebody that's going to champion your cause. And to be fair, if it's not a CDO, this is the same kind of thing you need to tell them. Because our CDOs don't need to be experts in data governance. They don't need the minute detail because they're going to get bored. And the kind of people we need them to help influence don't need the detail either. So we just need to get some certain things really, really straight and clear so that they help us with our data governance implementation and not hinder us. Because to be fair, I've had some very senior executives trying to help me over the years and they have made life perhaps a little bit more complicated than it should have been by perhaps delivering the wrong message. So this presentation is just a summary of all the things that I have found that have made a difference if you get this message across. So this isn't the 101 of how to do data governance. If you want to do that, um, I do training calls, sorry, shameless plug, but um, there's, there's all sorts of things. There's loads of free blogs and, and resources online as well that I've written to go and find out how to do it. But this is, you already know what data governance is, hopefully, nobody's scurrying for the door, but this is what we're gonna tell our senior stakeholders to help us get our, our um, initiative as good as possible. <clears throat> so, first up, who here thought that data governance was about data? Wow, that's good. <laughs> well, somebody's, got, somebody's brave enough to go. Who here thought that data governance was about technology? And apologies to any software vendors in the room. <laughs> well, <clears throat> actually, more about people, particularly in the early phases. This is all about this culture. We've got to get this mindset where people think that data is an asset. And even that they think about it at all, other than it being perhaps a, a necessary evil or an annoying part of doing their job. <laughs> So, you know, we've got to get them excited about data. Now, I get my job title and possibly yours doesn't sound the most exciting job title in the world, but I understand that if we can get that foundation of understanding what data we have, where it is, and whether it's good enough to be used, means that your organization can do the most amazing things with the analytics, the AI, the ML. They can't do that if your data's rubbish, or you know what rubbish, you know what rubbish, what data you've got in the first place. Um, so what we do is absolutely little. And to do that, we need everybody in your organization understanding that data is important. And it doesn't matter what your organization does, data is critical to it. And, and, and particularly in these days, we cannot survive without thinking about and managing our data. So we don't want to run around talking about what tools we're going to buy and you know what we're going to implement in the early phases of implementing data governance. This is all about getting people to understand 
what data truly is, what value it has to your organisation, and get them to understand why we want to do data governance. Only when we change that mindset, when we've achieved some kind of data literacy, can we actually start these people thinking about doing anything with their data. <clears throat> now, the next thing I found, who here has been doing a, a data governance initiative for a while? Hands up, right. Keep your hands up if you've been doing it more than six months. Uh, more than a year? More than two years? Okay, those of you with your hands up. Is it finished? Is it all implemented and embedded? <laughs> exactly. Data governance is not quick. It is not a once and done. It is a, it's a change management. It's not a project. But you might need a project-like thing at the beginning to implement it. But you, you can't just suddenly say to your CDO or whoever else you're accountable to, yeah, that's great because um, by the end of the year we'll have all the data owners in place, we'll have all the definitions written, we'll start monitoring data quality. Because if you're in the centre managing the data governance initiative, you're so reliant on your business being engaged. And to be fair, if they don't engage with you, you're not actually doing your job right and it's not working. So you're, you're working with so many things you cannot control. So you, you meet somebody and they say, yes, of course, we'll write those definitions next week. And next week comes and goes. And next month comes and goes because they've got some other big project going on or transformation going on in their place. And it makes it so hard. So, yes, I do think you should have targets because if we don't have targets that we monitor and report against, we're never going to achieve anything because everybody just sit back. You know, it's not going to go well if we go, well, we're, we'll, we'll, um, we'll identify our data owners sometime. You know, it's clearly never going to happen. But if we say, I'm going to identify them all by next week, that's just crazy. So we've got to be telling our CDOs, I cannot commit to a beautiful Gantt chart. Now, I'm a former project manager. I do love a good Gantt chart. All beautifully, I know what I'm going to do in order. We can't commit to that up front. I don't know who's going to work with me when, when I'm first starting data governance. When I'm just starting the initiative, I have no idea which areas we're going to do the initial phase with. So I can't set this all in advance. And the same with budget. I don't know what I need. I don't know what I'm going to fix because I don't know what problems I'm going to find until I've started. And you need to make that very, very clear because otherwise these people just think that you can say, here you go, these are my tasks for the next three months and we can all relax and then put our feet up and say it's, it's finished. And it isn't, I'm afraid. So just remember that. <clears throat> now, I may have touched on this one already. Is it something I believe on? Data governance doesn't finish. It is definitely not just for Christmas and we all get excited about it and then we get a bit bored and then we go back to focusing on the more exciting things. <clears throat> Whatever your organisation is doing with data, it will need data governance. Now, it might be a lot less intensive once we get past the initial phases. It will be truly embedded in an organisation. And, you know, perhaps the data owners remember that they're data owners and do what they need to do without constant prompting. But <clears throat> we must remember this isn't as an end date and it's done. I had a call with a prospective client last week and I kind of hope that they lovely lady, lovely conversation. Then she said, anyway, we want it all done in three months. And I went, you she didn't listen to me. I said, it's not a, it's done in three months. And she, it turns out she was a project manager and that's exactly what that company wanted to do. This isn't a project, this is never over. <laughs> it will be less work in the future, I promise. I've been doing it long enough to know it really does get easier the longer you've been doing it in your never goes away. <clears throat> now, you need to be talking to your CDO or to the, the, the lovely people here who are CDOs. You have a really important job to play when it comes to data governance and that is to be the main salesperson. Now it's really funny, when I worked for a consultancy, they were going to promote me and if I got the promotion I was going to get a sales target. I abhor sales, I hate selling, so I left the company rather than sell. And then it was a bit ironic that I realised a couple of years later, actually all I do all day is sell. I just sell the concept of data governance. Um, and this is what we need our CDOs to do. You need to do it as well if you're the lead, the data governance manager, but you need your CDO to be flying the flag for data governance. Talking to all their peers, all the senior stakeholders in your organisation and getting them to understand that everybody has got skin in the game when it comes to data governance. Everybody's got some benefits to gain from it. And they've got to help you explain that to people. Because 
And I'll be honest, in all the organisations I've helped over the years, some have been easier than others. Some I can say, I'd like to talk to the finance director about data governance, and they go, yes, of course. And I go, wow, that was easy, I must be getting good at my job. Next client, I go, no, finance director's far too busy to talk to anybody about data. Data sounds like, you know, you should go and talk to the MI team, they'll talk to you about data. And it's going to be really hard work, and it's only by having our senior stakeholders have, who are having conversations, who have access to those people, that you're going to get in to talk to them. And so we really, really need you, if you're a CDO, on our side, waving the flag for data governance and opening doors for us and, and setting up meetings. You know, if you're a CDO, I promise I'm not going to drag you along to every meeting with me, but just get those doors open. <laughs> Let us have those conversations with people. <clears throat> now, out there in the hall, you could, there's every tool under the sun, and there's plenty of options when it comes to data governance. And, you know, I think they are really, really now if you could go back on LinkedIn about, well, I don't know, eight, ten years, I'm trying to think now, you might find me posting on LinkedIn going, this isn't about tools, you don't want tools. <laughs> I've changed my mind on that. I think they really can facilitate and help with your data governance initiative, if done correctly and at the right time, when you know what you want it to do. You don't buy a data governance tool at the beginning of a data governance initiative and then go, great, it does this and give it to the business. I've worked with organisations that have done that and the business goes, what's that for? You've given us a tool to do something we didn't have to do before. So we're not overly excited about it. So it's really, you know, they are valuable, but what we actually need to do is work out what we want to do for data governance. So I haven't put a slide on it, but this is probably something else you should tell your CDO. There is no such thing as a standard data governance framework. And if anybody tells you that, run a mile. <laughs> because is your organisation exactly the same as your, your competitor in every single detail? I doubt it. You're going to have a slightly different structure, you're going to have your own different culture, you're going to have your own challenges. So, framework designed for one company work for you. Now, I've, I've worked in many different sectors over the years and I've worked with multiple companies within some sectors and I can tell you they do not have the same data governance framework. They might have a lot of component parts that look very, very similar, but it's the subtleties that make it work for them and what else. So, you know, and it's the same with tools. The data governance tools do so many different things now, so don't dive into a tool until you know what you want it to do. You know, I, I've known so many people who start a, a tender process with software companies. Um, and then, they're start, and then the software companies get frustrated with them, rightly so, because the client isn't actually sure what they want the tool to do. And it's going to end badly on both sides, and it's a waste of everybody's time. So yes, they're great tools, don't discount them, make sure you know what you want it to do. Start your initiative, get your head surrounded, get your business engaged, then get a data governance tool, if you're lucky enough to have the budget. Not everybody does, and if you don't have the budget, don't get upset, you can do an awful lot with Excel. But don't tell the guys out there, they'll shoot me. <laughs> So, <clears throat> so, this was probably the biggest mistake that I made in my early career. I would kind of talk my way into some senior people's offices and I'd get in there and just out of sheer energy and enthusiasm I would tell them everything I knew about data governance and what it was and we should do everything because it's best practice and we should do it now and all data should be So, goodbye Nicola. That sounds really complicated and scary and we're not going to do that. And what I wasn't doing was thinking about why were we doing it. So going back to work tomorrow and telling people we should do data governance because Nicola says is a really bad idea. You've got to find out your why. Why are you doing data governance? And you need to focus on the outcomes. If you go and talk to a senior stakeholder and say, I'm going to do data governance and they're going to make some people accountable for data and we're going to document our data and we're going to do definitions and then we'll probably start doing data quality monitoring and reporting. If I was that person now, with the benefit of age and maturity, I'd go, so what? What's in it for me? And that is what I've been told quite a lot. <laughs> so, you know, so I learned to stop doing that. So each and every person that your CDO is talking to, and to be you you're talking to, think about what's in it for them. Why should they be doing data governance and not for the greater good or you read it in a textbook or you heard it at a conference. This is what are the true reasons. Do you have a regulator in your industry that says you have to, well you know that's a 
the big stick, you've got to comply with that one. But perhaps there's some benefits that you hope to get. You could get competitive advantage, you could reduce your costs, increase your profits, reduce inefficiencies, all sorts of um, benefits from doing data governance. But again, you don't want to go and meet any senior stakeholders and recite, here's my list of 10 generic benefits that come from data governance, because they're going to switch off halfway through. You need to say, okay, Mr. Finance Director, I know you're having a drive and one of your strategic objectives is to reduce costs this year. How about if I could help you do that by identifying where we waste a lot of money because of poor quality data and manual workarounds because our systems are not integrated properly when it comes to data? Your Finance Director is probably much more interested in that than you say, we're doing data governance because it's the best thing to do, we should be doing it. It's I'm too busy doing other things, focusing on reducing costs. So outcomes are absolutely everything. Think about why you're doing data governance and what's in it for everybody you're talking to, not the what it is when you're talking as senior stakeholders. <clears throat> now, it's data literacy is kind of a term that's only been around, I'm trying to think, two, three years. But now everybody seems to be familiar with it, but we're still not making sure that all our employees are data literate. And it is so frustrating because if the vast majority of your staff think that data is a necessary evil, it's the inconvenient part of doing their job, we're not going to get anywhere. We've got to make everybody understand that they have a role to play in, in looking after our data. And that actually, if the data is better managed, their job is probably easier and they can do more of what they were hired to do and, and be, um, you know, be good at. Now, you know, I've been telling people they needed to worry about their data long before somebody coined the term data literacy, but it makes my life a lot easier now because it's a nice term to hang it on and I can tell them to go and Google it. But we want people to think about data as an asset and they can't do that if we don't train them and brief them. Now, if you're talking about your whole organisation, they can't come to conferences and training courses. So you need your CDO to be making sure that there's some kind of company-wide data literacy, e-learning or there's company briefing lunch and learns but you want your CDO to be promoting that making sure that it's not the CDO his data office or her data office the analytics team they're not the only people in your organization should, should be worrying about data everybody should and I always like to liken it um, to a building this is a bit difficult now in these COVID times where you say to people you all work in offices well, let's pretend we're all working in offices does your firm just go yep we own the building and it's an asset, but we'll just let it deteriorate until it gets too bad and worry about it. Or do they have a facilities team going around and checking that the ceiling tiles aren't going to fall down and hit somebody on the head and that the water taps still work and that the air conditioning filters have been changed? Well, they do the latter, and it's probably illegal for them not to do. But that's what we do with data. We gather it. We probably don't even think it's a, an asset. And then we just kind of, well, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope it'd be good enough when we use it. And when it's not, we run around, panic, fix it, at the point we're using it and then we go Phew, that was that sorted we got that report off and we don't worry about it till next month or next quarter when the same rubbish data comes through and we do the same thing and we've got to stop doing that because we don't do it with our other assets why would we do that with data so we have to get everybody thinking about data and and their possible impact on it and also the good impacts on them of having it managed better now this was one thing that I really missed out for many years because I'm doing data governance. I don't care about anything else that's going on in the company. I am so blinkered on data governance. If you don't align your strategies, you're not going to be doing data governance on the right data. And sooner or later, somebody's going to say to you, oh, it was all very nice, but um, you know, it was flavor of the month, but we don't want to do that anymore. And it's human nature, or it's my nature, to fix the things that are quick and easy to fix. So I can go, da-da, look fixed it isn't that great but it might be the wrong data I might be the only person that cares that that data wasn't quite right so I now learn that the first piece of work that I ever do when I'm doing data governance is to look at the corporate strategy and you need to make sure that your data governance activities and if you're having a data strategy or a data governance strategy all align back up to that corporate strategy because if it's what your organization is trying to achieve, you need to make sure that you are doing that analysis to understand, is our data good enough for us to achieve that strategy? And if it isn't good enough, what do we need to do? And then that becomes your strategy, rather than the, oh, I found a, a bit of a black hole over here, I'll dive down into that and sort that out, while the company's worrying about moving off in another direction.
So it's really important that whatever we do in the data governance space is very much aligned with what the corporate achieves. And that really helps when we start having conversations with senior stakeholders. Because when you're talking at the C-level um, stakeholders, they're likely to be responsible for one or more of their objectives under your corporate strategy. And so you can use that to explain to them why it may be more challenging for them to deliver that with the data as it is currently and what you can do to help them. And they're going to be really, really interested if you do that. But if you're trying to distract them from delivering the corporate strategy, you're not going to get very far. So alignment with strategies is absolutely key. Now, <clears throat> I told you already when I started, I had big plans, huge plans. <laughs> and they never went very well. But what I have learned is you do need to think big, but don't necessarily try and start big. So, and I think we need to make that clear to our CDO and to all the senior stakeholders that we're talking to, is that we need to have this master plan, but we must reveal little chunks of it at a time so that we don't scare people off. Now, the very first firm I worked for as a consultant was a Scandinavian uh, consultancy, and one of my really good friends I worked with there was a, a Swedish chap who used to come over to London every week to work at our client. And he spoke faultless English, but with uh, an accent which I kept calling the James Bond villain because he was this thick Swedish accent and I was waiting for him to be plotting everything and I suddenly realized one day because the conversation we were having because I was upset that the client wasn't understanding what I wanted because I'd made it too big and complicated again couldn't, couldn't help myself I just get too excited and um, he said to me Nicola calm down just remember we're taking over the world one attribute and you just don't tell the, the client that. We sneak it up on them slowly. That One minute they're doing only a tiny bit of data governance, then suddenly they're doing lots and it, they're getting the benefits. And that really, really rings true. And I've kind of applied that to everything I've done. And we need to make sure that our senior executives understand that. We do have this image of the big picture and we will share it if, we, if we're asked. But I'd rather not to begin with. Let's just find some nice um, prototype, pilot phase, and we can incrementally add. We can roll it out across an organization, and we can, you know, maybe get a year or two down the line, raise the bar, and say, well, now you've got to do this, this, and this as well, because these benefits, we'd like some more. But on all else, make sure, whatever you are doing for data governance, that it delivers value. Don't get so het up on the what data governance is, um, that you're not delivering value. And it's quite funny, you always like to look back, well, perhaps now a sign I'm getting old now, and you suddenly think, all these things that happened to me on my career before I even got into data governance perhaps influence how I think about data governance. But I was a project manager for a few years, and the part of that I did my Six Sigma training. And then has anybody come up with Six Sigma? And, you know, there is a point ab above which that you put more effort into making anything of a higher quality than it's worth. And the same is true with data, I've learned. You know, should all out be 100% perfect? Well, there's a little tiny data governance evangelist deep down inside me these days who goes, well, yes, it would be nice, wouldn't it? With me says, why? Is all of that data valuable to your company? Is it worth our effort in saying that we should have definitions for everything? Probably not. You know, and think how many thousands of data fields your organization has. How well is it going to go if you say, here you go, here's a list of all these. I'd like you to put your hands up for which one you own and write a definition for me. You're not going to go down well. And some of that data is never used. And perhaps we will get to look at it in the future. But let's identify the valuable data, the data that's critical to our business processes. The data that, if it's wrong, really does cause us pain, causes costs, damages our reputation, upsets our customers. Make sure that everything we're doing is delivering value. So I think if you remember this, think big, but start very small and make sure everything you do actually delivers value then you'll be doing the right thing but you do have to remember maybe in the early phases it's hard to see the value the value will come but it's a bit later on and that makes it a bit of a harder sell sometimes now this is a um, one of my favorites don't overcomplicate data governance I have seen some amazing data governance frameworks they're like a hundred slides long in a PowerPoint deck and I can't get my head around them, so why were they beautifully designed? Um, and I've talked to people who've been hired as a new data governance manager, and they've spent three months locked in a darkened room planning this data governance framework. 
to be fair that was me <laughs> back in 18 years ago it doesn't work it's not helpful at all but you know I now go I've gone totally the other extreme I've become so pragmatic the older I've got start simple with data governance even perhaps simpler than you think you need because you can always add the detail if the simple is too simple and it's not working but you know don't have something that's so complicated that people won't follow it. Have something nice and simple that aligns to perhaps other processes, other ways things are done in your organization so people don't have to think too differently. And then it becomes easier for them to accept because you really need this to be the culture change that I started this off with. And for that to happen, you've got to make it easy for people to do. You don't want it to be too many hurdles and obstacles for them to do the right thing. We've got to make it easy for them to do the right thing. So that is possibly a lot to take in. <laughs> um, and I've probably talked about a lot of my mistakes as I was going, it's great, great therapy session for me. I have a um, free report on my website um, called um, The Biggest Mistakes That I've Seen and How to Avoid Them. And it's really funny because I wrote this a few years ago and I actually didn't put culture in there. But um, so if you, I will rewrite it when I have time. Um, if you just go to my website, which is um, nicolaraskin.com, I wasn't very overly exciting in the title of my company <laughs> and website, you can download that and there's loads of other free resources. Feel, feel free to download them and use them. I've decided that I made it my mission to help as many people as possible be, to be successful with data governance. Now, I can't do that one-on-one -on -one with everybody, so if you can help yourself to some stuff off my website or follow me on YouTube or anything that, you know, to get some good advice, please do. I think people really underestimate the value of what we do. What we do is actually really, really exciting, and we help other people do some very clever things. <laughs> so keep up the good work, and I think we may have just a couple of minutes for questions if you have anybody question. So I think if you have a question, I think you're supposed to put your hand up and we'll run around with a microphone, and I need to put headphones on so I can hear the question. <laughs>